headlines of VTV News. Prime Minister chairs government conference with enterprises. Thừa Thiên Huế tightens vessel control to fight IUU fishing. And later on in our world news, top Hezbollah's commander among 14 killed in Israeli strike on Beirut. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello and welcome to VTV News, broadcast live to you from Hanoi. You're with me, Lina Pham, and here's the top news of the hour. General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, CPV Central Committee, and President of Vietnam, Tô Lâm, his spouse and a high-ranking Vietnamese delegation left Hanoi on the morning of September the 21st for a trip to the United States, where they will attend the United Nations Summit of the Future and the 79th session of the UN General Assembly, or UNGA 79, hold working sessions, and later make a state visit to Cuba. The UN trip is significant as it demonstrates Vietnam's ongoing contributions to the world's largest multilateral organization and the nation's proactive engagement in addressing regional and international issues. The U.S. working visit coincides with the first anniversary of both nations' comprehensive strategic partnership and their preparations for the 30th anniversary a bilateral diplomatic ties in 2025. The state visit to Cuba underscores the traditional solidarity and special friendship between Vietnam and the Caribbean nation. It also highlights Vietnam's emphasis on Cuba's importance in its foreign policy. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching chaired the government standing committee's conference with enterprises to discuss solutions for the country's socio-economic development. He emphasized that the conference demonstrated the party and state leaders' special attention to the private economic sector, calling it an important driving force of the economy. Currently, the private economy contributes 45% of GDP, 40% of total social investment capital, creates 85% of jobs, and accounts for 35% of import turnover and 25% of export turnover. Leaders of private economic groups have proposed numerous solutions to the government, the prime minister and ministries and branches to strengthen the private enterprise sector and its development. The Prime Minister expressed hope that businesses would continue to promote the spirit of patriotism, love for the people, national love and compatriotism, solidarity, self-reliance and historical and cultural tradition, values on which the country was founded. He also encouraged them to work together, to succeed together, enjoy together and develop together. Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm will attend the UN Summit of the Future and the 79th session of the UN General Assembly. He will also pay a working visit to the United States. This trip marks his first visit to the United States on multilateral foreign affairs and the first working trip to the U.S. in his new position. The visit highlights Vietnam's commitment to promoting peace, stability and sustainable development. Over the past 50 years, Vietnam has significantly contributed to the UN's core peacekeeping, security and development cooperation activities. The country has also held important positions within the UN and is highly regarded by the international community. At the 79th high-level section of the UN General Assembly, General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm will emphasize the message of strengthening multilateralism and working together for a peaceful, stable, prosperous and sustainable future for all. It's a very important occasion because, as I referenced earlier, uh, the key harvest of this year's high-level week will relate to the outcome of the Summit of the Future. Uh, which is targeted to be a game-changer 
and which uh, the, the thrust of which really is to reinvigorate multilateralism. The UN in Vietnam is very pleased to know that Vietnam will send a high-level delegation led by Party General Secretary and State President, His Excellency, to His Excellency To Lam, to the 79th uh, session of the UN General Assembly. Vietnam's participation is crucial to ensure access to affordable financing for sustainable development. Vietnam also adds its voice and leadership to the critical discussions on climate change. During the trip, Party General Secretary and State President Tho Lam is scheduled to hold bilateral meetings with U.S. leaders as the two countries celebrate the first anniversary of their comprehensive strategic partnership. The working visit offers an important opportunity for Vietnam and the U.S. to review achievements under the new framework and discuss measures to sustain their relationship's positive, stable and substantive development in the coming years. I never thought as a historian of, of U.S.-Vietnam relations that I would see a general secretary and president um, visit the United States of America, New York City, and in particular Columbia University where I teach. And I think it, it just augurs a really exciting new, uh, new place, a new, a new space for U.S.-Vietnam relations. General Secretary and State President Tho Lam's trip reaffirms Vietnam's contributions to the largest multilateral forum and deepens relations with the United States. It strengthens commitments from senior leaders and promotes cooperation in economics, trade investment and technology. It has been 20 years since the implementation of Central Resolution 5 from the ninth session on renewing and developing the collective economy. The resolution has contributed to the comprehensive development of Hanoi's economy as the city's economy has consistently maintained a robust growth rate. The city will focus on innovation in implementation methods, aligning with the spirit of Central Resolution 20 on renewing, developing and improving the efficiency of the collective economy in the new phase. This woman has worked on these vegetable fields since childhood. In her early days, the land was barren and desolate. It's hard to imagine that today, this same plot has transformed into model organic fields. Organic fertilizers and biological pesticides are different from what they were in the past. The cooperative has raised the standards and the results are much more effective. The village boasts about 100 pioneering households participating in the clean fields model. These households supply the market with approximately 400 to 500 tons of organic produce daily. Determined to bring prosperity to rural areas, this successful model has been expanded across Meilin District through cooperatives. We collaborate with Agribank and other organizations, including the Farmers Support Fund and other departments, to effectively utilize sources, boosting the capital mobilization for cooperatives' production and business development. Hanoi leads the country in the diversity of cooperative sectors. Agricultural cooperatives comprise over 60% of the total, with the remainder in industries and trade services. The city plans to establish 100 new cooperatives annually until 2030, aiming for at least 80% of these cooperatives to achieve good or excellent performance. We are pleased with the achievements, but also concerned about the cooperative model. Vietnam must have at least three types of cooperatives ranked among the world's top 300 cooperatives. Among these, I believe Hanoi must be the spearhead. To achieve this, the city needs to enhance quality and develop a model cooperative that is large in terms of membership and capital scale. Forming a powerful cooperative union or federation in a specific sector is the city's goal. As the revised land law gradually takes effect, alongside the cooperative law and more open credit policies, the collective economy in the capital is poised to make significant progress. Hanoi is expected to continue serving as a nationwide model for collective economic development. 
Industry and construction play a significant role in the overall economic development of key hubs like Ho Chi Minh City. Over the past eight months, the city's index of industrial production grew by over 6.4 percent compared to the same period last year, marking the highest increase in three years. For the remainder of the year, the city will continue to prioritize supporting industries to maintain this growth momentum. This unit specializes in producing cast iron products, selling to foreign invested enterprises in Vietnam and exporting to international markets. Since 2018, its annual growth rate has consistently ranged between 15% and 20%. This positive outcome is attributed to the practical support provided by local authorities. Conferences have provided us with opportunities to find new customers, diversify our clientele, and expand our markets. In addition to positive global market signals and the efforts of enterprises, the city has implemented solutions such as connecting banks with businesses to streamline credit supply. Additionally, authorities support exporters by organizing fairs and exhibitions to link supply and demand. The City Council has issued Resolution 9 to support policies for certain priority sectors, including supporting industries and other key industries. This is an opportunity for small and medium-sized enterprises looking to join larger supply chains. The City has issued a directive on measures to boost growth, including dispersing public investment, attracting social investment, promoting public spending, and creating consumption opportunities for the public. With these solutions, the city expects to achieve a growth rate of over 8% in the third quarter and 8.7% in the fourth quarter, laying the foundation for the city to reach the goal of 7.5% GRDP growth this year. Vietnam's fisheries sector is developing into a key national economic driver with an annual output exceeding 9 million tons, maximizing potential, leveraging advantages, and focusing on sustainable development remain the sector's ultimate goals. Localities have intensified efforts to monitor fishing vessels and combat illegal activities, aiming to have the European Commission's yellow card on Vietnam's seafood industry removed. Since the beginning of this year, authorities have detected 358 fishing vessels that lost connectivity to the vessel monitoring system for periods ranging from over six hours to 10 days. We comply with legal regulations by fishing in the designated zones. We always keep our tracking system on and accurately record all data. Despite these efforts, 50 instances involving 18 fishing vessels crossing permitted boundaries at sea were recorded, primarily near the outer boundary of the Gulf of Tonkin. Authorities flagged all these cases, and vessel owners were notified for verification upon their return to shore. Through monitoring, we found that most vessel owners in the province comply with the regulations. Only a few cases fail to follow them strictly. We are intensifying supervision according to the rules. There are still challenges and shortcomings in offshore fishing and implementation of IUU fishing regulations in Vietnam. Therefore, the ministry will continue to support fishermen and promote further awareness about IUU issues. Through monitoring, we found that most vessel owners in the province comply with the regulations. Only a few cases fail to follow them strictly. We are intensifying supervision according to the rules, combating illegal, unreported, and unregulated IUU fishing is a critical task. The province must strictly handle cases of fishing vessels intentionally violating IUU regulations and closely monitor vessel activities at sea. <laughs> Coming up next, free bus rides take students to school. And EU Vietnamese Documentary Film Festival opens.
you're watching VTV News. A flight of the Russian Ministry of Civil Defense, Emergencies and Disaster Relief delivered 35 tons of humanitarian aid to Vietnam on September 20th to support recovery efforts in the aftermath of Typhoon Yagi. A handover ceremony was held in the presence of senior officials from both countries at Nội Bài International Airport in Hanoi. The humanitarian aid included mobile power stations, 30 seat tents, 10 seat tents, sugar, canned meat, and canned fish. The shipment, weighing about 35 tons, was transported to Nội Bài International Airport on a flight of the Ministry of Civil Defense Emergency Situations and Disaster Relief of the Russian Federation. A representative of the Lao Cai Provincial People's Committee received and transported the aid last night to promptly distribute it to affected individuals. The collapse of Phong Chau Bridge in uh, uh, disrupted traffic between Tam Nong and Lâm Thao district in Phu Tho province. In response, some local people have volunteered to travel dozens of kilometers daily to take hundreds of students to school. This ensures that the typhoon's aftermath doesn't interrupt the students' education. Nhi, a 12th grade student at Tam Nong High School in Tam Nong District, lives in Lâm Thao District. Her daily route to school normally crosses Phong Chau Bridge, which collapsed last week due to Typhoon Yaki. As a result, her journey to school has become significantly longer. I have to travel 40 to 50 kilometers to school now. It used to only take 5 to 7 minutes to get to school. Now it takes 40 minutes. Nhi isn't the only affected student. The collapse of the bridge separated about 500 students and teachers between the two districts. Recognizing this issue, Da, a driver, and some colleagues had stepped up. They're using two passenger vans to provide free transportation for the children to school. Each car goes in different direction, navigating through village roads. The farthest destination is Bing Lai Kamun in Lâm Thao District, 50 kilometers from Tam Nong School. To ensure students arrive on time, the driver and their colleagues must depart at 5 a.m. daily. My daily work has many challenges, but when the children get off the bus and thank us, we feel very happy. I'm trying my best to help the children in such a difficult time. Every day from dawn to dusk, he parks his car near the school gate, waiting for classes to end so he can take the students home. Us parents and teachers are deeply grateful to the drivers for their practical assistance. The local community is also willing to provide free accommodation to students until they find a suitable means of transportation. We have also adjusted the school hours so that students who live far away can get to school on time. These beautiful images and heartwarming stories emerging after the big storm demonstrate the admirable values of the Vietnamese people. With the history of over 70 years, the carpentry profession in Thuận Minh Commune, Tho Xuân District, Thanh Hoa Province holds a fairly stable position in the market. Currently, the profession provides employment for over 500 local workers. Through the decades, the carpenters here have worked tirelessly to preserve their traditional craft. Located in a small hamlet in Inlyuk Village 3, Thuận Minh Commune, Thọ Xuân District, the woodworking production and processing facility of Đỗ Văn Minh family is always bustling with the sound of chisels and saw welded by skilled carpenters. Following his father's tradition, Bing had dedicated himself to this craft for 12 years. My father passed it down to me, so I have an obligation to continue it. 
I've invested heavily in machinery. The products must be both beautiful and affordable to compete in the market. After 70 years, the traditional carpentry village of Thuận Minh still boasts over 100 participating households. Carpentry is considered a cornerstone of the commune economic structure, providing jobs and increasing income for more than 500 local workers. However, to maintain their foothold in the market, these wood production facilities continue to innovate and diversify their product designs. My son has become quite skilled. The operations on the computer are very precise because there can be no mistakes. Even a minor error could deter customers. The carpentry profession in Thuận Minh Minh was recognized by the Provincial People's Committee as the traditional craft in 2022. A number of households have worked to preserve and promote the values of the profession. According to wood production facilities, preserving the traditional carpentry craft of Thuận Minh requires planning and building a dedicated craft village. This would allow households to work in a concentrated production area and make it easier for customers to find products. The Hanoi Children's Palace in Nam Tu Liem District was recently inaugurated. This project aims to meet the growing demand for entertainment and educational activities among children and young people as the capital's population expands. This is a key project for the capital during the 2020 to 2025 period. The palace is located at CV1 Lake Park in the Goze New Urban Area, covering nearly 40,000 square meters and requiring an investment of 1,300 billion Vietnamese dongs. Its goal is to create a comprehensive development space for children. Designed around the theme Nurturing and Developing, the project features two large circular buildings at its center. This new facility promises to be an ideal destination not only for children in the capital city but also for visitors from elsewhere. On September the 20th, the 14th European Vietnamese Documentary Film Festival took place in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, showcasing 22 exceptional documentary works from 10 countries, including Vietnam. The festival, organized by the National Documentary and Scientific Film Studio, or DSF, under the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, in collaboration with the European Union National Institutes for Culture, aims to introduce outstanding documentary films to the public while fostering cultural exchanges between the EU and Vietnam. This year's festival will explore new themes, particularly focusing on issues related to children and human rights. The films offer audiences insights into various cultures and contemporary global issues. The festival also provides a platform for filmmakers to exchange ideas and techniques, potentially leading to future collaborations between Vietnamese and international filmmakers. The festival will feature 13 Vietnamese documentaries including uh, Đào Tấn Fire or Ngọt Lửa Đào Tấn and nine international films from Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Israel, Italy, Spain, Sweden and the UK. Coming up next in our world news, top Hezbollah commander among 14 killed in Israeli strike on Beirut. And Security Council holds emergency session on Lebanon. The Israeli military confirmed on Friday that its airstrike in southern Lebanon had killed a senior Hezbollah commander, Ibrahim Akril, commander of the elite Radwan unit and deputy commander of Hezbollah's armed forces, was among those killed. The Lebanese Health Ministry reported that the airstrike resulted in 14 deaths and 66 wounded. This marks the third time Israel has conducted airstrikes in southern Beirut since the conflict began, marking a clear shift in its military campaign from Gaza to Lebanon and ushering in a new phase of the regional crisis. 
The UN Security Council held an emergency meeting in Lebanon on Friday. This meeting was prompted by an increase in cross-border fire between Hezbollah and Israeli forces, as well as deadly explosions from wireless devices targeting members of the group. UN spokesperson Stefan Dujaric urged all parties to immediately de-escalate tensions, exercise maximum restraint, and stop hostilities. The representative of Slovenia, which currently holds the UN Security Council presidency for September, emphasized the need for the Security Council to act before for the situation spirals out of control and stress that diplomacy is the only way to resolve these tensions. Summer in the city can be a sibling. Urban heat islands are significantly warmer than surrounding rural areas, largely due to traffic and heat absorbing infrastructure materials. To help cool cities and boost biodiversity, the Frankfurt based Office for Micro Climate Cultivation has created an innovative urban greening solution. Their vertical greening system features diagonally suspended plants and sales designed to maximize shaded areas. The vertical greening system uses 25 different species of annual climbing plants to create shade and enhance biodiversity, each with unique features like rapid growth and vibrant blossoms or fragrances. These plants require less root space and water. They also contribute to reducing surface temperatures through evapotranspiration in which plants release water to the surrounding air, dissipating ambient heat. Vert is, a, is basically a planting structure. It's a um, static structure which is keeping um, plants for uh, a season. And we are growing in this structure like um, seasonable plants, different kind, which are growing up to 10 meter within one year. As the process of urban development profoundly changes the landscape, natural and permeable surfaces are replaced by impermeable structures like buildings and roads. This creates what climatologists call urban heat islands, areas within cities that experience significantly higher temperatures compared to nearby rural regions. These are also areas with high concentrations of people. Our main goal is to offer a solution with which we can bring back nature into cities really quickly and easily. In really short time, not only the people, but the whole environment can actually benefit from the advantages of these climbing plants, which are, for example, cooling shade, fresh air, and just a boosting biodiversity. In Europe, nearly half of schools and hospitals in cities are located in urban heat islands exposing vulnerable populations to health-threatening temperatures as climate change impacts worsen, according to the European Union's Environment Agency. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast. And that's it for this edition of VTV News. Thank you very much for watching. To rewatch our program, you can download VTV Go from App Store or Google Play or tune in our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash VTV4Go. Goodbye for now.